garden or your farm, but this was University, I believe, of Nebraska or Iowa. Sorry, I can't remember. And I don't like to sound like all Midwestern states are the same. They're not. Just like all Southern states aren't the same. They're not. Especially Florida. Um, <laughs> bacteria. You know, you're talking 500 million in one gram. You know how much of a gram is? A thousand milligram? Take a vitamin pill? Try 500 million plus 20 million actinomycetes, a million fungi, 500,000 protozoa. And by the way, this is, the reason why they call it a soil food web, this is not really so much a hierarchy as it is a Serengeti. You know, that TV program, Mutual of Omaha, you see the, uh, the, uh, the ungulates like uh, antelope and gazelles and wildebeest, you know, they're the herbivores. That's the bacteria. And then you got the cats that eat the ungulates. The lions, cheetahs, tigers, right? That's the protozoa. And that's really critical to understand because these food systems are all based on prey and predator. And the way you, you, you consolidate energy in an ecosystem is with prey-predator relationships. Wolf, caribou, coyote, sheep. <laughs> Just kidding, you know, <laughs> could be, right? Um, of course, and I talked to Greg Judy, he's making what he calls a flur. And he's gonna create sheep that are gonna be coyote resistant because he doesn't wanna have the dogs protecting the sheep anymore. So he says, I'm gonna have coyote resistant sheep. I said, how are you gonna do that? He said, I'm gonna make a flur, a flock herd. Cow, herd is not bothered by the coyote, so the stupid sheep will get eaten by the coyote, and the ones that reproduce are going to hide in the herd. So the coyotes can't get them out of the herd. He said, that's my flirt, and that'll be my resistant, coyote-resistant sheep. So even there it can work, if you want to go down that road. Okay, we're going to take a, what, five, ten-minute break? We're going to take a ten-minute break, and get out the stretch walk around there. Sanctuary. Okay. Ten minutes and I'll be at it again. Let's know. We'll, we'll put it up some more. We'll try to make everybody happy as we can. No need to freeze. All right, I'm going to just let him go right back and, and continue uh, a lot of in depth explanation. <laughs> so many details. Too much information. We were discussing last night how biology. Uh, we haven't begun to understand biology and how these microbes work together and, and one thing affects another. And so, were you a, you said you're a biology major in college? I was an animal science major. But so you got quite a bit of biology. A lot of biology, yeah. And, uh, he was botany. explaining to me about some of his clients and how they, some things are just not understood. Biology makes a difference. These microbes are a fascinating world to, to begin to <coughs> try to understand. Well, the whole immune system of the body, you know, I mean, the whole gut, <coughs> we talk about that too. Um, let me uh, wire myself up here. Understanding life on Earth is complex enough without trying to live life on Mars. Yeah, we <coughs> we got to give that up. We've got plenty to, <coughs> it's a lot more interesting down here, I think. Okay. Um, anyway, this just gives you the, <clears throat> the, the pyramid approach. But it's really not a pyramid, it's this web. You know, it's like a spider web. Some people call it the soil food web because there's all these interactions between life forms. Now, an interesting thing about this, this is the same in your body. You've got flora in your gut, we'll talk about that too. It's, it, it's one of the most important parts of the human body, the animal body is the digestive system with this ecosystem. Because what this, what the, the exchange of information, the exchange of nutrients, all the metabolic processes that are going on in the gut profoundly affect the rest of the body, whether you're a cow or whether you're a human. And it's the same kind of dynamic. What, 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 what I find interesting about the natural world is not that we have different species living in our intestines as opposed to living in what's called the rhizosphere. Rhizo meaning root, sphere meaning uh, ball, root ball. These are ecosystems. And every, it's like, it's like uh, Albrecht said years ago, 
Microbes eat at the table first. They eat at the table first. And until we get that, we're not going to really grasp the fact that everything else is efficient. If you're an unhealthy person, and I get calls every day, emails every day from healthy individuals who I don't even know, all around the world. And the, you know, I, I usually say, well, either go to my website and, and go to the Acres website and I give them some referrals to read up on things because it can spend a lot of time ahead of time. But I always ask the question, how's your digestion? Because if your digestion's compromised, everything else suffers. And you can't get well with compromised digestion because 70 to 80% of the immune system resides in the gut. So this is the immune system of the planet. This is the immune system of the planet. This is the digestive tract of the planet. And until we become ecologists and understand that you know, the body ecology uh, mindset about how nature works, which is how our bodies work, starts with understanding ecosystems that are in these spheres and the energy exchanges, we really are at a loss to fix things. Now, when we look at ecosystems, you have to look at this phenomena called fractal geometry. There's a funny word, fractal, meaning frac fractions, geometry. It's basically how nature creates infinity within a finite area. It has to. Everything's finite. But the, to expand or ex exponentially ex create potential for lots of reactions, we're talking biological reactions, we have to have surface area. And so in the soil, it's based on sand, silt, and clay. That's the surface area of soil. So typically they say you have a sandy loam or a clay loam. But the three main soil types is sand, silt, and clay. And what you have on your farm or in your backyard or in your garden is a combination of something. And you end up with, you know, a clay loam, a silky clay loam, or combinations. And that's all based on surface area. Now, what you see up here, I'm not sure if this uh, thing is the pointer. Hope I don't do something stupid here. No, the pointer's not working. Let me see if this will. Nope. Uh-oh. I hate, I hate when I do that stuff. So I'm not going to push any more buttons except the two that I know. What you see here is a big ball. That's a piece of sand. And that's a ball that doesn't even get on the, on the slide. Then a ball that's in the slide is fine sand, very fine sand, and then silk. And those little dots are clay. Okay? Clay has got the most surface area. Therefore, it has the most potential for redemption, or it can be a nightmare. Sand down here is what you have, right? You got sand. And that's another nightmare because you don't have any holding capacity. You have no surface area. You lose nutrients. So you have that big giant ball or the ball that's with barely within the slide versus those little tiny dots. So the real question is, is your soil a five-gallon bucket in size and volume, or is it a 55-gallon drum? Depends on whether you have sand, silk, clay combinations. All right, that surface here, it's called fractal geometry. And this is the web. Now, why is the web important? Two main uh, foods in the universe is what? Grow foods, go foods. Grow foods are what? Protein, nitrogen. Go foods are carbon, carbohydrates, fats. Everything needs a balance. We just had a discussion during break. Your cows squirt manure, watery manure. What is that? Too much grow food, not enough go food. The rumen microbes are starving for energy, and so the animal will take fat. That's called the Atkins diet. All right? Everybody know what the Atkins diet is? High protein diet, you lose weight. Why? You cannibalize the fat on your body because every cell runs on protein and energy. You create an energy deficiency, you're going to cannibalize it. So that's what happens with a lot of these animals on these, on these Atkins diets, high protein diets. The grass down here is loaded with protein and there's no energy in it. You've got that invasive species called Bermuda and Bahia 